So in this video today, I'm going to explain to you why I think that you're losing a lot of money. This is actually an interesting topic because it's actually going to be only focused, only focused at all around investments. Let's get down, let's check this out and my reasons why. So first off, if you invest in ETFs, there's a lot of stuff that goes in with them. Number one being the MER and of course how much that MER really is. So essentially MERs when it comes to mutual funds will be usually between 2 and 3% and that is quite high. Meanwhile with MERs on ETFs you're only going to be paying a very small amount versus mutual funds. So when we start looking at most mutual funds, at least up here in Canada, what we're essentially looking at is a few TD or most TD mutual funds, most RBC, all of them, they're going to be looking at between one and three quarter and 3%, which is huge, which means that for every $100 that you have invested in that mutual fund, within a year, it's going to be $3 less because it's 3% of $100, and that's the MER, that's how much they're basically charging you to invest your money. Meanwhile, with ETFs, they're more, I guess, electronic, maybe less hands in the pie so they can essentially have a lower MER. And most ETFs will be between 0.03% to uh, up to about 1 to 1.25%. Now, essentially what you're looking at with those MERs is what should happen is the higher MER should give you a higher return because it's more actively managed, but that's not always the case. You should also be looking at a higher MER that can give you essentially a bigger increase on your money, and that's what we all kind of want to see happen. So for example, with Invesco QQQ, we're looking at a 0.2% MER, which essentially means that for every $100 that we put in, it would essentially cost us 20 cents. However, if this $100 doubled to $200, we would still be paying that same 2.0%, except now you'll be paying 40 cents because of course, if your $100 turns into $200, your MER is still going to be 0.2%. It was 20 cents here, which means that it would be about 40 cents here. However, here we can see with SPY that essentially it's still an index fund. However, it's MER is 0.09%. So in theory to just a topographical view, I guess you could say, SPY doesn't seem like a it seems like a, a lot better of a deal than QQQ. Well, QQQ follows the Nasdaq, while the S&P is following the the S&P. It's two different markets. And in five years, we can see that it essentially doubles its price. However, when it comes to QQQ, we're seeing that it was around $118 five years ago, which is well more than double than now versus where it was. So even though you're paying a little bit more with that MER, you're getting a much bigger return at least over the past five years. So something that a lot of people make a mistake with is, oh, well, let's say the last five years, the stock market or whatever my investment is, has gone 10, 10, 10x higher. That's fantastic. I am the best. Well, guess what? What's going to happen in the future is not going to be guaranteed as to what just happened. Let's say three of those companies just went under because whatever may happen, well, guess what? Now you lost that initial investment and you have nothing to really return on it, right? So you have to really be focused on the overall picture and really see what the companies are doing today and not necessarily five years ago. So we've learned about MERs so far. We've also learned about how mutual funds are essentially kind of screwing you in a way because they're costing so much more to invest with. However, there's one more thing that is costing a lot of people money, and that is your, your interest rate. And I'm not talking about your mortgage. I'm not talking about your car. What I'm talking about is your savings account 
and that is it's giving you essentially nothing. Most savings accounts right now are not even paying interest because you don't have enough in it. Meanwhile, people who do have enough in it, let's say I think there's like TD that will give you uh, a double like 0.1% interest if you have like $4,000, $5,000 or $2,000, whatever it may be. And you start looking at that and you're like, wow, yay, 0.1% interest. But in reality, what we're actually looking at is them taking all your money because you could easily make 8% and 8% of $1,000 is 80 bucks. You wouldn't even get 80 bucks for a $10,000 investment into your savings account. You would never even get close to that. So because of that, people are losing money. If you are holding money into a savings account because you're going to be using it over the next couple of months, that makes sense because you want to have that money in case the markets go down or whatever. I can understand that. But if you're holding it in there because you think that it's going to be your retirement, it's not going to work. Inflation right now is at 2%. Your interest account is probably at basically zero. And if it's not at zero, it's at 0.1, which essentially gives you literally 10 cents for a $100 investment. Meanwhile, investing in something like SPY should give you an 8% return. That's $8. That alone is massive versus 10 cents. If you add a zero to a, let's say make it a now a thousand dollars, that's a one dollar investment now, or the one dollar return in a year versus eighty. This is massive. You are essentially getting eighty times, eighty times more money in the simplest SPY ETF versus <laughs> versus versus a savings account. Meanwhile, inflation's at two percent. So if you're not if you're in, if your money is not growing by more than two percent a year right now, or even three percent, four percent, depending on what's happening right now with the COVID and making everything expensive, gas has doubled. If you're not making, if your money's not making that much more money for you, if it's not basically having babies essentially, baby money, if it's not creating more money for you, then it needs to be reinvested somewhere. You shouldn't be just having the money sitting on the side doing nothing. It needs to work for you. If you're holding around and carrying money, it needs to work for you. There's no sense carrying money if it's not working for you. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.